Hello everybody, my name is Cyberwolf and welcome back to Dream Daddy. When we last left off, we had gone on a not so swell date with Brian. <laughs> um, and uh, I had actually tried to get a video with Damien, but um, the video corrupted, so uh, yeah, I had to I had to go back in the save. So um we're gonna we're gonna go back to it i've already seen most of the stuff that we well i've already seen all the stuff that happens with this but i'm gonna try and keep all the jokes exactly the same that i tried to make before um even though i'm a little bit more tired than i am yesterday when i tried to record this because i don't have a whole lot of time until i have to go to work in fact by the time this video co goes up i will probably already be at work um how do you do i finally decided to join this information super highway I am not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest, vic in, latest in Victorian fashion, the inevitability of our own demise, or black cats. I love black cats, they're so cute. Please send me a letter. Ugh. Sorry, I got a little something in my throat. On a Friday night, you are most likely to listen to true crime podcasts while I taxidermy my new specimens. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? A coffin. <laughs> uh, what are your turn-ons? Pronouncing bosom correctly. What did you want to be when you grew up? A bat. What's your favorite movie genre? For an art house horror. What's your ideal date? It's night. We are at an industrial dark wave club in Berlin. The music drums to the beat of our hearts. What do you never leave home without? An upside down cross. I spent a lot of time thinking about mortality salience. Alright, let's give Mr. Tall, Dark, and Brooding a, uh, well, actually, Tall, Pale, and <laughs> Brooding a, uh, a, uh, a message. I always try to make others uh, drink a full glass of water in the morning to help wake up. I've been trying to do that. I've been trying to remember to do that, I should say. And I'm not really too keen on remembering it. But I'm starting to try and get a whole bottle of water down before I start a recording. I think it's been helping a lot because I fe start feeling more awake afterwards. I don't know what it is with that, but it seems to be working. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see that Damien's typing. But then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee, and the computer finally dings. Matt. I must confess my excitement to receiving... <clears throat> Ugh. To receiving your kind letter for, as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, however as I... Uh, I don't think I silenced my phone. I gotta do that. There we go. Okay. Um, I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in as, in as gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Oh, whoa, there's more. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden. Should it uh, please you, till then, adieu. Yours humbled, D. Bloodmarch. Mm, I don't know... I mean, he's supposed to be really fancy and Victorian, so I kind of feel like the name Bloodmark, like saying it in a different way, might be more right, but I'm really not sure. Um, I stare at the screen and reread <laughs> the letter several more times. Hey, Amanda. Can you help me with something? Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. Hey, I haven't had those for years. No, no. Can you interpret this for me. I turn the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand NetSpeak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying lol and LMAO or whatever and decided that what they needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s. 
so what do I do? Where's your pen and quill? What? Yeah. Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, how will we address the noblemen in regards to your upcoming, uh... Debu uh, de de debutante ball. <laughs> I don't know what that word is. Okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up <laughs> with a suitor worth... Yeah, I was making sure that was the right word. A uh, suitor worthy of our land. Or our drowry. Or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time, and now you're reciting things you know about it. Citing things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Like the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie. Still gotta be though. Great. So, what do I say to Damien? I got this. The man reaches over to me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. <laughs> Regards, Matt. Amanda hits send and smiles at me. Well, I suppose that's that. Alright, I take the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house, it's more like a manor, a state. The Gothic architecture looms over the other homes in the cul-de-sac. It's like, um, uh, what was it? Um, the Adams Family? Like, all the other homes are normal suburban homes, and then you just got, like, this giant Gothic manor. I love it. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull a large, ornately carved bat's head, door, knocker, back, and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. Come in. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, nothing, uh, noting the oil paintings of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. Are their eyes following me? As I'm admiring them, the front oh it's a doggo. As I admire them as I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. H Hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in the paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Matt, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase, the walking candle holder. What's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry, there was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? I accidentally left the door unlocked, and slightly ajar, so that knocking on it would open it. And the creepy oil paintings? I like oil paintings. Right. 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 Oh. Please, let me show you around. Okay. <laughs> Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor, again, for some reason. Oh. Mm, excuse me. And this is one of the older homes on the block. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. Something's still in my throat. This is one of the older homes on the block. Yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Oh. Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the am uh, amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. Do they listen to my chemical romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward, there's more to see. We reach a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. Mm. And this is the library. Sunlight uh, streams in from floor to ceiling, arch, uh, streams in from floor to ceiling, arched windows, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Fuck. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves. <laughs> and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Um, look at the butterflies. I walk up to the glass display of pinned bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. <laughs> I pinned them all myself. Maybe I could show you some, uh, maybe I could show you how sometimes. I feel like I gotta sneeze again. I'm concerned I would stick my pen, stick the pen right through my finger. Oh, uh, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? 
No. <laughs> uh, let's pick up a book. You know, Matt, in the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book and ran at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I return it to a random page and read it aloud. <clears throat> Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him in with, <laughs> with shirtless and out of breath. He looked up at Sh Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> Damien snapped the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. Oh, Jesus Christ. Fucking nerd of fan fiction. <laughs> That's a rare book from my private collection. Um, I walk over the window and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It shows the case as a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups. With his daughters on his back. Damn. He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Damn! Wow! Whew. Didn't expect to get a, you know, a great scene from uh, Craig while uh, while over at Damien's. Huh. Did you know that Victorian spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of a full-length windows? Wait, really? Oh. No, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. Oh. Please, will you join me for tea? I followed Damien to his sitting room, where finger, uh, finger foods have already set out upon a beautiful, tired, silvery tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having hi a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Damien smiles to himself. What? It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the later time of the day that the working class had to enjoy tea, and the height of the tables on which they're served. Oh, <laughs> my dear friend, we are currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. <clears throat> Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Uh, your home's really impressive. Ooh, boy, those those are eggplants. It seems like you, you've you really put a lot of work into this place. Th thank you. No one's ever complimented my home before. Hell, I can barely get matching salt and pepper shakers in my place. And look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. Oh. That's very generous of you to say. What you got... What got you so interested in goth stuff? Oh. Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> See you <in> Japan. <laughs> huh. I'm afraid I don't understand. Did you see the Black Parade? <laughs> You're serious? <laughs> of course. But it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. <laughs> I'm sure your son's probably blasted it on full blast, like shaking the house completely a million times a day. Seriously? <laughs> I'd love to see a marching band. <laughs> Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What we'll started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? Hmm. I like not dying when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. Uh. I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. Uh. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws, and love it all the time. Love it all the same. Tell me, Matt. Do you have any hobbies? Oh man, do I? <laughs> uh, oh man, I do. But I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. <laughs> well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing and, quite honestly, rather attractive. <laughs> Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Look, <laughs> quick, 
Sounds sophisticated. Uh, I like watching soap making videos on the internet. I uh, love me some word jumbles. I learned how to juggle once. Um, I actually kind of do like soap, soap, soap sculptures in a way. I, I appreciate their aesthetic. Not that I really would want to like wash my hands with them or anything because then once you do like you're eroding it and then like even if you take the plastic off of it and then you're gonna get dust on it and then you gotta wash the dust off and that's gonna erode it and it's really not a win-win situation so I kind of just like the I kind of just like the way they look so I guess I'll go with that and I also watch videos a lot so I guess that's uh kind of goes all right Soap is uh, an important advancement in modern society, getting rid of germs and stuff. I would say that the people who make soap are the true heroes here. To watch them work is an honor. I um tried making some of the Mando once, and we both had to go to the doctor for the rashes. Which I guess goes to show you, we should leave it to the professionals. We finished our tea and finger sandwiches. Come, I have one more thing to show you. Aw, oh, it's gorgeous here. Are those trees or mountains? Uh, Damien takes me around the back of his home, uh, where a variety of flowers flourish in beautiful landscaped rows. <clears throat> a small stone path weaves through it, and butterflies flit lazily through the air. My garden. It's beautiful. It's really gorgeous, really. It's so huge. Thank you. <laughs> Victorians took flowers and floor arrangements very seriously. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Interesting. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things, depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Damien uh, leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off a vine. Lilium bultiferum, the orange lily. What do you think this one means? My loins are ablaze. <laughs> Thou art the tightest. Three cheers for sweet revenge. Alright, so um, I completely forgot what this actually meant. From the last time I played yesterday, because I've had I had work and mainly just forget everything that I do in a video. But um, uh, okay. So orange, orange is like a cheerful color. So I'm gonna go with something cheerful, and that kind of like fits that. But uh, didn't you, didn't you say it's a lily? And lilies are supposed to be like delicate, I think, and like a symbol of love or something. So I'm kind of like in between my loins are ablaze and three cheers for sweet revenge. I'm gonna go with that one. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. <laughs> okay, well. And that's precisely why floral arrangements is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Um, I, I like sunflowers. They remind me of sunshine. And then you can eat the seeds as a delicious snack. What a practical choice. My stomach grumbles. Aw oh, man, now I want some flower seeds. I have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. A bouquet for me? He he would put together a bouquet for me? Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful sun beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a flo a phone rings. Oh. oh, Matt, will you excuse me? I must take this. He pulls a cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. But is it a flip phone? That is the important question. <laughs> Go for it. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. I bet, uh... uh I bet Brian is just like... I bet he's either very jealous and intimidated by this yard cuz like he is very very jealous or intimidated by this yard cuz like he he takes very good care of his lawn I don't know if he takes care of like obviously he must take care of all of his yard but he's very proud of his nicely cut lawn 
So I wonder how he would feel about this giant, gorgeous backyard of flowers. Like, I mean, it is straight up gorgeous. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into that garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes. And then immediately died. <laughs> oh, hey, a gargoyle. Oh, no, I knocked over the gargoyle. Great. <laughs> Fix it, Garg. Alright, um, uh, uh, that's the head, nope, um, um, huh. nope, wrong one, okay, yep, wait, what, I didn't go, aha, there we go, okay, hit, boop, whoops, nope, I gotta move it, there we go. Go! It's okay to cry if you're feeling sad. Don't bottle up your feelings. Bad idea. Whew, that was a close one. Uh-oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Ugh. Matt, my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter I must attend to. I, I'm so afraid, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything all right? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything is perfectly fine, but I... Ah, uh, it's loosened. What's wrong? He appears to have... Well, his teacher needs me to come to the school post-haste. Do you need help? Oh, no. You don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads got to stick together. You're right. This is one of Lucen's more elaborate stunts. I would have greatly treasure... I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go! Oh... Damon and I walk into the school and immediately greeted by an anxious-looking eh. Hugo. Hey, Damien. You're here in record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time <laughs> uh, to the My Kids Are In Trouble rodeo. Oh. What is it this time? Oh. This, Damien, you have to see to believe. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Damien and I fall in a step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room, with a flight of rickety stairs leading us down to, uh, darkness. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting up through the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of the creepy basements! We find another teacher in the boiler room, tucked away uh, in the back of the basement. With him are Lucen and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucen has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucen tried to kill me. I... The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. Lucen, did you try to cask of a Montiato Ernest? Oh, Jesus Christ. Like, I remember that so much. Like, that was one of... I feel like that was, like, one of the most studied things that we did like okay back in like freshman year of high school there was like this whole maybe like a two-month thing of learning about uh edgar Allan poe and i feel like the cask of amontillado was probably the most um the most looked at thing we did i feel like it lasted like two weeks of just extensively studying that story like I mean, Edgar Allan Poe, he was, he was pretty good, but, I mean, like, we spent so long and so much studying on just Edgar Allan Poe. We could have studied a lot more other, like, story makers back in that time. Like, you know, if, if we just, like, spent, like, a week on Edgar Allan Poe, maybe it wouldn't have been so bad, but I feel like that kind of, that kind of like, extensive studying kind of, like, 
brought to life all the emo and goth scene stuff that, you know, high schoolers go through at that age. I'm I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turn to Damien and whisper to him, What's a cask of Amontillado? It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gives, gets his enemy drunk. And I actually remember him being his friend. Like, for some reason, he just decided to brick his friend up, and that's why it was so easy to trick him into doing so. He got him in there, he got him drunk, and his friend was just like, Yeah, alright, I'll sit here for some nice, for some more wine. Yeah, dude. And then bricked him up. At least that's what I remember, anyways. Uh, lures him down to the cellar with a promise of wine of a fine vintage, then buries him alive behind a brick wall. It's a lovely story. So, wait, Lucent, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes before, because he's an idiot but then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest! 20 minutes? Dad! Sweet man, shake him! <laughs> Sweet man, shake him! <laughs> Jesus Christ. It took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Amontillado. Like, seriously, two weeks on one story? It's kind of ridiculous. And it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucin was leading you into an elaborate ruse. Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. What? It's only five pages long and there is no movie. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucin to read it for me. Uh... Actually, he didn't even pay me. So, when you think about it, this is me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. <laughs> you guys are always telling me to engage in literature, and I did. I don't see the pro I don't see a problem here. All right, I'm filing this under what the hell? Don't do whatever that was. Again, you two are both suspended for a week. Where do you even get the bricks? How do you get them down here? Ernest and Luce and high five. <laughs> the teacher starts. To, the teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. <laughs> You go, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmark, you too. Thank you for your mediation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school in tense silence. Luce and Damien and I all pile into my car and begin the drive home. Luce immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. I know, son, it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I want to see that you, uh, that you're, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you decide that you would, uh, like, to, uh, geez, I'm just having this trouble, uh, I'm struggling to speak right now, fuck, god, I can't even say words just straight out of my head. That you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. Maybe you can spend the next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. I love you, son. Lucin continues staring out the window. Love you too. Aw. He spends the rest of the drive in relative We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. That was, that was kinda of sweet. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucent hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's alright. All things considered, Lucent's brickling is pretty good. So, there's a silver lining. Could be a masonry. Hmm. Could be going into masonry at some point. You know, we could build brick houses. Maybe some, uh, maybe we could work with Brian from across the road to, uh, I don't know. Like, build patios or something. Uh, there is that, yes. Um, he's probably going through a phase. I really admire how you handled that. This is, uh, you were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. 
I just want what's best for him. I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It really does. You're a good dad. Oh boy, there's those eggplants. See you around soon. It'd be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Uh. I come home and find Amanda curled on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo. What you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. Ugh! I hate this show. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. <laughs> the Tiny House Hunting Brothers watch them with uh, demused expressions, both their heads touching the low ceiling. Oh boy, you know, I used to actually really want a small house, but then over like a year of kind of obsessing over it, I kind of just felt like it's so impractical, it's so small, like, you really have very little space for anything. And, like, I I kind of feel a whole lot better in, like, a more open environment. Like, it, it's just so small! Why, why would you ever want to be in such a cramped house? Like, where the stove is literally just a stone throw away from your bed. That just doesn't seem good. <laughs> I told you, I want a two-bed, two-bath, shabby-chic cottage. This house doesn't ha even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg! Why don't they just get a regular-sized house? I... I don't know. Like, I mean, I could see the appeal in, like, renting a small house for maybe a week or so while you're, like trying to get away from it all but like it's just so small I'd hate that it's better than a hotel room but it's just so small I wouldn't want to like live in it for long term how would afternoon tea go it got strange we had to go to the school and pick up Lucen since he tried to he lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of a fine vintage and then tried to break him into the wall, right? How did you know that? Has everyone read the story except for me? Pretty much now, yeah. Loose and live stream the entire thing. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, this entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damien guy's a character, but, he re <laughs> but he's really good company. And a surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Maybe next time I don't need to wear a, a, a turtleneck around him. Fang? Oh god. One of the things is Fang. Taped sports? That was just Bricky. Bricky as in the Victorian term for good. <laughs> Bricky? <laughs> Last time he said that was the jammiest jam, <laughs> and he's like, I don't exactly know what that means, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I kind of really like Damien after that. He, he reminds me a lot of, like, Ben, so maybe a good choice to go with. So, I guess, uh... I'm kind of really all out of time now for this, but I guess next time I will go with Hugo since he's next in line. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a like, please share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe on your way out. This is Cyrewolf, signing off.